Hello and welcome to Cinema Subculture, where we discuss everything strange, obscure and downright messed up in the world of movies. My name's Gary. And I'm Simon. So Gary, um, what film are we here to talk about this evening? After the success of Zombie 2, Lucio Fulci returned to the horror genre with City of the Living Dead. When a priest hangs himself, a gateway of hell opens up, unleashing a series of strange happenings and supernatural terrors. The film stars Catriona McCall in her first role with the director, and it's become one of Fulci's most beloved films. So we kind of um, we kind of both I think came up with this this film to talk about this time. We couldn't quite decide on what to do next, um, but I think I think you brought this to if I try to remember back. You know, we did, we never did this as an episode for the podcast, but we definitely kind of came together on watching this. I think you'd suggested it to me and I picked up the Arrow Blu-ray back in the day. So um, I'll let you maybe go ahead with your, your, your thoughts first. I assume you saw it before. I, right. I, did. I can't remember the timeline there mm. um, of what came out when. Um, but yeah, City of the Living Dead. So one is um, uh, Fulci's kind of zombie uh, quadrilogy. Um, so this was after Zombie 2 had like made so much money um, then so he went back to the well a wee bit um, tried to do something I think which was a bit more um, steeped in kind of atmosphere um, read the story about how he had been reading like H.P. Lovecraft and he wanted to do something along that kind of line um, but I mean it's been a long time since we've seen it, so we watch it now. Uh, this film is like batshit crazy, isn't it? It's uh, <laughs> not necessarily in a good way, but um, I think that's part of its charm. But um, yeah, uh, it is plot wise, it, it is a bit of an incoherent mess, I think. But we tend to, so it's basically the, the basic setup is um, there's a town in the south of America, in Georgia. It's set in Georgia. Well, it's filmed in Georgia. I think it's roughly meant to be set there as well. But right. a priest kills himself. Um, gates of hell open up. All sorts of sort of weird things happen. And you have, parallel to that, um, a woman who has a psychic link, uh, played by Catrona McCall, to the, the village or the, the town she wants to go there and try and save it. And they have to close up the, the, the gate that's opened. Uh, within a period of time um, but it kind of starts and it's like so fast paced where we just get a series of characters coming in that sort of we sit, get a set of characters and it moves on to the next one and on to the next it's kind of like a kind of soap opera style where you're just kind of moving around the houses uh, and I did feel this time it was hard to get into the movie for the first half an hour because you get you're kind of overloaded with um, sort of characters and plot points that um Ultimately, kind of a thrown in there that that is kind of unnecessary. I do wish they would kind of maybe spent a bit more time on the script and sort of nailed it a bit more, refined it a bit more. Uh, so it's a bit of a shame that way. But um, uh, I mean, it, it's a rampant, rampant story, and I think that the strength, the film still stands despite that. I think because of Fulci's visual style. Um, which is the real strength in the movie and the atmosphere that he's able to kind of imbibe into the into the screen. Um, yeah, you have a lot of kind of nice shots. Uh, Sergio Salvati, I think, was the director, uh, uh, director of cinematography. Um, yes, that's right. Aye. Uh, so you have really great sort of chiaroscuro, Loki lighting, um, uh, lots of mood and atmosphere um, in the cinematography there. I think we, I think we had a bit probably opposite reactions to this film this time. So in my memory, um, from watching this, probably only seen it once or twice before, I had this kind of image of uh, uh, like having, like not particularly enjoying the 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 take on zombies in this film. You know, it's kind of quite a, it is quite a distance away from the kind of traditional like Romero zombies or the kind of popular zombies of of a uh, today right like they were all pretty much sick of i think uh, to be honest with you but um it was weird watching this um like so close to when we watched zombie flesh eaters or zombie 2 um 
I, I had a, the opposite reaction to him. This time it was it felt so refreshing to me right from the opening. Like um, even the 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 score, I was like. I think because the zombie flesh eater score kind of drives its nail in your head and just keeps going, you know, over and over. And it's the same kind of music. Like, for some reason, this felt really refreshing. The score and the, the opening scene and stuff, uh, and the atmosphere really, uh, I don't know. It, it took it to another level a bit for me this time. Um, but yeah, I really loved all the kind of the, 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 as I say, the, the different take, the more supernatural take on zombies, and it, it and kind of the scenes you're talking about with the kind of the soap opera, kind of uh, jumping around with the. The, the townspeople uh, actually kind of worked for me for some reason. Like it kind of built something that wasn't there in like zombie flesh eaters for me. Um, uh, I think just just the story in that one, right? But like um, you know, because it's not a town that they're going to. It's it's a bit different, right? It's a more discovery kind of um, adventure type film. But um, but what it really put me in mind of this time was um, John Carpenter's The Fog. Okay, um, it really had a similar atmosphere to that film when you and I, I think, on the whole, the story is probably more coherent in in that. Yeah, I'd say that for sure. But but I don't know. There was something about the, the kind of the 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 townspeople and the you know the guys in the pub and stuff like that. And there was some some kind of cool moments for me that worked really well. Um, and like, I was really kind of. I mean, and I've seen this. I've seen the film before, but like, I was really kind of. Um, Taking the back to the word, but like um, I don't know, uh, what's what's what I'm looking for? Like, it it really kind of gave me um, excited me. This is so so stupid, but like the, the gore was really cool. Like I just mm. thought it was really kind of um, the the, the bit where the, you know the, the priest appears and kind of gives the 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 Christopher Lee Dracula stare, which is right. essentially what the guys doing. Um, and the lighting's the same as as well as everything, but um, to the the girl in the car and and it basically eviscerates her, like you know she's like spewing up her guts and stuff. I don't know. There was something that just looked so modern to that that you know, uh, it's, it took it beyond like a kind of for me some of the kind of splatter stuff um, that we got in the eighties. Um, the, you know, the only thing is they did the they did the brain <laughs> the brain uh, the the scalp crush brain mm. squish. Uh, a bit too many times for me, right. <laughs> um, and obviously the ending goes a bit batshit crazy. And I'm not saying the film's not batshit crazy, but for me it was—I don't know—I found it really refreshing um, compared to like the last time. Like, I, I really enjoyed um, last time we watched Zombie Flesh Eaters as well, but this, I think, I think I'm just worn out on the kind of tr- more traditional zombie story. Right, okay. Where and it, even though that's kind of like a zombie, it, sorry, a voodoo kind of take on it. This being a, a more kind of you know the gates of hell are opening and the de- that's why the dead are returning, um, really kind of I don't know it it just made it a lot more uh, interesting to me and, and I thought the the visuals were really uh, fun and uh, I I remember like the the drill scene first time I watched that um, I think I was just more grossed out with it or. Maybe I was more disturbed with it the first time I watched it, but this time it was just it was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't know, just the, the special effects of it and the kind of yeah. the, the time that it takes. It's like the, <laughs> the, the the you know the ice the ice scene in um, Zombie Flesh Eaters. Mm. Uh, it's just it's just the way that the cameras you can see, it's just you can see the cameras moving. They're not moving near the drill, but you know it's just it's so <laughs> well put together and um and like, what, what the hell? Why is the guy doing it? He's like it's so over the top. <laughs> um, but I just I found it a lot of fun. I really did. Um, I'd say the end for me, if not the the exact end, but like the the actual conclusion to the story is the letdown for me. That that's one kind of like big negative. I, I feel like it, it's resolved rather. With the actual um, last scene, the very last no, shot. No, not the last scene. The, 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 what, what they do to basically defeat the, the zombies. Oh, right. Okay. It feels a bit kind of, like, I don't know, piss poor. Like, it's just like, <laughs> oh, we just had to stab them. Like Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and the groin, I mean, like, it looks like, right, but I don't know if there's anything to be said there. But it just felt a bit weak for me, you know? Aye. There was none, uh, and I know, no weaker than your kind of, Hollywood zombie, you know, shot to the head thing, but for the the, the supernatural power that this uh, priest or this you know uh, hell priest, whatever you want to call them, uh, had it felt kind of weak sauce that you know I stabbed to the <laughs> the, the ghoulies, uh took him and his pals out with in a ball, ball of flames. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, then then obviously the actual ending, which we can dis- discuss. I think I, we, I, I was so sure we'd done this. Actually, I think I said to you for the podcast before because we, I'm sure we spoke about that ending. Right. I, we must have done it just on our on our own time or whatever. But, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, 
I, I, I mean, I don't know if you want to go into it, more of the plot. I mean, you, yeah, you can, well, you can, I'll uh, pick up the zombie point because uh, yeah. mm-hmm. um, I do agree. It's obviously quite a, it's a kind of refreshing zombie take mm-hmm. to the point uh, to say are they even is it even a zombie film? Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the kind of major zombie um, trope would be the sort of grabbing the, crush, the skull crush thing. Apart from that, it's almost a question of the even physically there. They seem to be kind of more ghostly apparitions. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Um, it's hard to tell if they're actually physically present there, mm-hmm. although they do have to seem they do have like physical powers yes. uh, to uh-huh. attack people. But um, yeah, and they can teleport and jump about, um, which is quite quite uh, unique. And yeah, I do. I did kind of <laughs> enjoy the their kind of psychic ability just to mm-hmm. stare at someone and then <laughs> make them cry blood or vomit their entrails up. Um, yeah. <laughs> we get I, I mean, that's, honestly, that scene's, though, I, I, it's, it's become one of my favourite scenes in horror almost, you know, like, it's so good, it's so mm. long and ridiculous and disgusting and, and <laughs> Um, it's just, it's just crazy. And like, like what's also, the, what's, the, what's the boyfriend doing the whole time? He's just like, going. Mm. By Christ, she's she's fair looking at that guy. Quite yeah. well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> a spooky guy in the police costume. Oh. Yeah, it is funny because <laughs> the the actual vomiting scene sort of is cutting back and forth, mm. and by the time it cuts back, to, <laughs> she's still vomiting like the fifth <laughs> time. And the fifth, <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, the, <laughs> it does kind of take it into comic trend. I don't know if that was intentional, but it is hilarious the fact yeah. that <laughs> it's just vomiting it uh, so much uh, for so long. <laughs> But I think it does kind of like. I think it does work as a dis- like, I don't think like if it wasn't your eye watching it, I, I I'm pretty sure people would find that pretty disgusting, mm. if not horrific. Mm. Um, and maybe they would get to comedic. <laughs> um, but I feel like um, it, it, I think it does does work in it, its disgust, you know, splatter kind of uh, credentials. I think it works for that. Yeah, but. yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> classic moment there. Oh yeah. But I can I go back to the characters. I don't know about you. I don't really care for Christopher George in this yeah, um, no. movie. It seems completely unnecessary. But I think they kind of brought him in because he was sort of a bigger name at the time. But um, I think the film actually gets stronger once at the end he's killed off at the end. Mm-hmm. And then the Carlo de Mayo character, Jerry, I think his name is. Yeah. It's a psychiatrist character. I think he should have been the male lead kind of from the start. Because um, he feels like a much stronger uh, presence. Um, Christopher George kind of comes across as sort of a seedy uncle to me, a guy who's yep. you know he's divorced but he's still kind of likes yeah. to think he's a bit of a ladies' man. Um, I, yeah, I didn't feel the chemistry was that great between him and Catriona McCall. Um, so I don't know if they'd have found that that kind of whole section with him kind of kind of derails the film. I think. Um, again, go back to the thing, there's kind of too many characters here. Um, if they'd been able to sort of simplify it and get them, Katrina McCall and Carol DeMaio together quicker, I think if they'd been the two male, uh, the two leads, um, that would have been a bit of a strength for me. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like they were trying to do something, at times trying to do some sort of kind of romance or some sort of um, flirtation between uh, the Mary character and the Peter Bell character, and it, it just didn't work for me at all. Just mm. like you said, it felt kind of uncomfortable and kind of like right, uh, <laughs> just what you're saying, like you see the uncle kind of guy. It, it did, but I, I found that as well. It, like, and it, it, you know, when it, when he gets killed near the end, I was like, oh, did they just kill that guy off? Right, okay. but that was the way I felt about it. I was like, quite. It was so when you said it's like almost like uh, it, it didn't really work for you, and it, it felt like it did. You know, it wasn't it was at a place. I think mm-hmm. they they felt that as filmmakers as well because they didn't really spend much time over, you know, supposedly one of the main characters' deaths. Yeah, and um, we were just gone. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I agree that the Jerry character worked worked better, and that they, that that would have been a better appearing. Yeah, um, it does feel like any of the deaths in here don't really mean much. It sort of played more for fun and gore rather than dramatic kind of heft. Um, I did feel that I was going through it. It's just like, okay, yeah, this character's died. Uh, this, yeah. Uh, Although the, um, is it Amy? Is that the character that, that has the, the little boys, the John John, John John's sister? Um, right. Is that the character, Antonella Fulci's character? Oh, Emily, sorry. Emily. Right. Is that- it felt like her death in the aftermath of that was kind of. 
played more kind of for impact. I thought I thought mm. that the, it was it was quite a cool death, but the the handful of maggots rather than just the skull crush or the you know the the eye the eye bleed. Um, yeah. And I thought that you know the family reacting to that. You know, I know it was for plot point reasons, but I thought that was more that had some sort of impact. I thought to mm-hmm. the story, um, and kind of you know, it, it pays off in the whole the Bob murder really because that's what you know they think it's him and stuff. So mm. it's done that. Uh, but yeah, no, I agree. Most most of the deaths are kind of um, either not characters that are ma- you know central to the story or yeah, kind of, you know they're just kind of brushed off. Yeah, I think maybe we just don't get enough time at the start to sort of bed in with any mm. particular character. Um, it's a bit of a shame. Uh, that, but you that mentioned again, it reminds yeah. me of the fog a little bit. Right, you know, okay. There's a lot of characters in that that kind of get introduced just to you know, right. to, for, for the a main character to leave the scene for the fog to come and kill them almost. Right. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> and again, have you seen the fog? Uh, uh, I haven't known. No, I've not seen the fog. Okay, mm. no, sorry, spoilers. Okay. <laughs> Again, you mentioned they are Bob um, Giovanni Lombardo Radici's character, who is great for what he's in, but he's used to sparingly. I think he's almost kind of, um, you know, it's a bit of a shame that he doesn't have a bigger part here. But I do enjoy. There's a great sense of kind of texture and atmosphere to those initial scenes where he's there. And you have this sort of mist, kind of sandy wind, kind of blowing across the screen. He goes into this old house. Um, I enjoyed all that stuff, um, and the, the wind kind of reoccurs as it, the film goes on. The wind, um, you know, it seems to get more more intense, building up the tension. Uh, mm-hmm. Enjoyed that. That gave that gave it a nice uh, visual texture. Yeah. Um, but I, I do wish we had a bit more from Lombardo Radici in this one. Um, it doesn't seem to kind of get his due here. But yeah, um, it's a shame. It, it does feel that he's kind of the, he's kind of there just for that death scene to happen, right. um, which I feel there's more like you like you're saying that there's more there that could have been done with him to and they could still have got you know got to that eventual death, um, but yeah no I I quite liked his character as well and kind of what I suppose he's the kind of most the character with the most backstory really even though it's just kind of hinted at you know with the yeah they seem to spend a wee bit of time you know building that up uh, Mm -hmm. to be something Um, and then this kind of doesn't really go anywhere no Um, but I mean maybe one of the takeaway points from it was something that uh, Dardano Sacchetti the screenwriter said about Fulci and Fulci's style that um, one of the things recurring themes in, in Fulci's films is like the the evil of men. He said that his characters are often often quite cruel and like cynical. Uh, so that that's apparent in that relationship where mm-hmm. that that's that the revenge uh, motivation for that death of the Bob character. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that that's true. There is like, maybe a more uh, kind of cruel, um, kind of vicious thing that happens in Fulci's films. Maybe compared to like well, he was comparing. Uh, Fulci to Argento and Bava, who maybe had slightly more, you know, maybe slightly more mainstream in a sense that um, they don't quite have that nastiness that maybe Fulci, Fulci's films sometimes have. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Did, so did you watch? Was it the Arrow Blu-ray you watched, or it was? Yes, the, the original one or the the remastered one? Uh, I don't have the remastered one. It was just the original. I'm, I'm, I must say, I, um, I actually watched it on the well, via like, the Amazon, like Arrow channel, okay. Um, and it was the remastered a uh, print, and even streaming it, it looked it looked pretty damn good. Um, I've heard right. some kind of criticisms of the UK, the both from 4K remaster and um, uh, the American one, which is now a print. Uh, apparently, the color grading is a lot brighter in the UK one, but it still looked pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Um, I must say, I think I think that may have helped add some of the freshness, maybe for me. I don't know, like you know, right. having watched it uh, back in the day, but it really made me. Um, it's really making me consider going back and watching uh, the Beyond and uh, House by the Cemetery again, uh, just to see. Cause again, I feel like I probably had a problem. Not, not that I enjoyed those films, but I pro- I feel like I probably still had a bit of a barrier there with the whole kind of these aren't real zombies right. kind of snobbery. Um, so I'd kind of maybe like like check those out again. Um, just to kind of see how I feel about them, but uh, but yeah, I, I thought this film was was a lot of fun, um, and yeah, I'd definitely watch this again. Yeah, just... did you watch the English dub? 
Yes, yeah. yes, right. Yeah, do. same here. Yeah, I'd like to check it out in the Italian mm. audio as well. That's funny. I was, I, was, I was actually thinking that when I was watching it. That's, right. that's weirdly. It was when um was I think it was when John John when when the the funeral home. I think there was a bit scene, and I was or it was when he, he was getting chased. I think out the house after after the the, uh, the zombie Emily kills uh, the other woman, uh, his mum. Or no, I don't know who it was. Um, and he was running, and I was thinking, like, I was trying to kind of remove, because the, the, the lot of the dub is kind of, you know, a typical dub fair, right? It's not always great. Um, but I was trying to watch the actual performances, and I was like, I, I would like to quite, you know, I thought I want to check this out in the Italian version, because um, I feel like it might not help, because it still worked for me pretty well, mm. but it might do, do it some favours. Yeah. I, t- I can't quite put my finger on what this has, because that this kind of feels like he's no completely invested in the story either. Um, but is that, maybe that's just his, his thing, because he's always maybe um, putting effort into the visual style. Um, but uh, that's just the films are a bit in, 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 incoherent and a bit of a mess plot-wise. But I think this has a quality that, that maybe um, it, it still kind of works in a way that um, I can't quite put my finger on, that his later ones maybe seem a bit more, he doesn't really care. Uh, you're, you're saying what's different about this? For, for, I was going to I was gonna say that when you're talking about, you know, that it's maybe not his best, but I think it's actually, it's one of the, from what I've watched, it's one of the easier watching ones, right? right. It's a little bit easier to watch. It's got a kind of maybe more traditionally kind of, you know, not Hollywood style, but like it's got that more of those elements probably a little bit easier, um, less kind of abstract stuff. I think you know, there's still a lot of you know snap booms to close ups and, mm. and eyes and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, um, but I don't think I think there's something here that makes it a little bit more, uh, as I say. Like, not not traditional Hollywood. I don't mean that, but you know, what I mean a little bit more kind of that American kind of uh, filmmaking. It's not really ch- too. It's not too ch- too challenging, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not yeah. really. It's not making you think too much, and I think that's maybe what this has got, and where maybe some other, other you know, the Beyond and and House by the Cemetery again from memory, um, he maybe tries some bigger ideas and maybe you know maybe doesn't always execute them the best. Yeah. Um, but it's still, you know, you still kind of get or can try and get where he's going with them, you know? Yeah, maybe it's just the budgets in a sense, because once his yeah. budgets get smaller, um, his maybe his his own weaknesses as a mm-hmm. director became more apparent there. Because I think one of the strengths of this film is the production design. The set mm-hmm. design in some of these old houses um, is really great. Gives it so much atmosphere as well um, on screen. Uh, does a lot of the heavy lifting there, I think. Yeah, you're right. It's really yeah. good. Um, but one of the things I did notice in this film that he doesn't um, use the rack focus technique as much Um, yeah um, which he he tends to go to all the time as I remember in the house by the cemetery Um, but this one's non-anamorphic so this is Mm -hmm. just a a flat widescreen so maybe because of that I think the Beyond and House by the Cemetery are both uh, 235 to 1 so maybe that technique works better in that ratio. Mm. Um, but that seems to be one of his go-to techniques. There's a few shots like that I noticed in here. Mm. But um, aye, so interesting yeah. that he's kind of um, settled on that. Just before, because I realise we haven't talked about it yet, let, let's, let's jump to the end. Oh, the end, yes. Film. Right, what the fuck's going on there? Right. <laughs> 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 uh, well, this is something Dardano Sacchetti said that um, like Phil too often didn't know how to end mm-hmm. he didn't end these films very well um, apparently that idea of the screen cracking was the, the editor's idea uh, right. I don't know it makes no sense um, the, the whole last scene was... makes no sense yeah the screen um, cracking is one thing <laughs> but it, it's her screaming yeah. and what she's seeing and, and right. what she's you know what we're meant to think is happening to John John, or, or right. I mean, is it the world cracking apart? Is that what we're meant to be seeing? Is that you know the gate of hell opened right on John John's face? <laughs> mm. 
Uh, you know what I mean? It's Aye. Like, we, we chat about the day and we were talking about is, is he a zombie? You know, is he turning into a zombie? Is that would be the cliche kind of ending. Oh, he's actually a, oh, he's a wee zombie now. Oh. <laughs> um, but that, <laughs> but that doesn't happen well, either. He's a wee so. zombie now. <laughs> no, no, I know. It's um, it's just it's it's like as if we're not seeing what she's actually looking at. Mm, yeah. You know, or I don't know. You know, as if they didn't shoot it or. They only shot her coverage <laughs> to get her reacting to it, and then like then I forgot to actually shoot the the horror scene, you know, yeah, something yeah. ripping John John apart or something. Or, um, but no, I, it's, uh, it's a weird one. But I kind of prefer that to the, as I say, the kind of weak sauce way to defeat the zombies. Right, okay. <laughs> like, that's fine. Just have them all crack apart. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a um, kind of what kind of ending. But I don't know, it just adds to the madness of the whole mm. movie that it's just like uh, the the it's all over the shop, isn't it? The, yeah. the, 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 the plot, um internal plot workings just don't clock together, <laughs> uh, lock together <laughs> in, in any shape or form. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, madness. Right. Um so I, I, yeah, at the end of the day that's kinda um part of its charm, I think. I think so. Mm. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, I, I definitely would. I mean, let, probably we could do some final thoughts. But I mean, my my kind of final thoughts is I'd I'd, I'd feel quite comfortable recommending this to anyone who likes kind of zombie horror or eighties horror. You know, mm. uh, I think there's a lot of fun here, and I think, as I say, visually everything holds up. The the scores really works for me um, in this as well. Um, the plot is just. I mean, like yeah, there's some 80s movies were just crazy in plot you know the plots were just all over the place so I, mm. I think it kind of just you know it works as well as any um, kind of classic 80s horror film for me um, but yeah I really enjoyed this this time it's a thumbs up fantastic yeah for me uh, it's sort of very solid Fulci not quite top tier um, but definitely worth watching uh, I think the takeaways would be um, it, strengths would be the technical side of it, uh, the visual style, the cinematography, the score. Um, um, so those things, I think, maintain its legacy, even though it's in many ways a kind of in, kind of incoherent mess. But um, aye, uh, I'd 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 recommend it to people familiar with this style. Yeah. Uh, one thing I was gonna say is the the medium from the beginning just doesn't come back. Talks yeah. <laughs> right to the camera and then doesn't ever come back. Like, yeah, they, they make take... a big deal of the Book of Enoch at the start. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And even take Mary back to her when she's revived from being like, you know, from dying supposedly. Mm. But then she's just never there. She, she doesn't want to go to Dunwich with them. Like, you mm. know what I mean? Nah, nah, busy. Yeah. <laughs> I've got another seance in five minutes. <laughs> So you've been watching Cinema Subculture. If you'd like more of this content, please make sure you have subscribed on YouTube, like the video and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching. I've been Simon. I've been Gary. Keep it extreme.